<laughs> Welcome to the data center. What does it take to deploy a modern data center infrastructure with a lot of GPUs and a lot of physical infrastructure and three petabytes of storage? Well, Applied Digital and Supermicro come together at this data center. It's brand new, 45 kilowatts of rack, power delivery and physical space and physical infrastructure. Can you manage all of those variables? You can't just order a bunch of GPUs and plug them in and be good to go. It's physical infrastructure. It is wiring, it is cabling, it is networking, it is planning. It's thinking about how long your fiber optic cables are. It's thinking about the different kinds of optics. In order to have terabits of switching capacity, it requires a ton of planning up front. Let's, let's take a look. Hello, and look at that. Look at all that infrastructure. Miles and miles and miles of infrastructure. But we're on the outside, we've got to get in. So, so what's a supercluster? Well, it's Supermicro's term for their rack scale AI solution powered by Supermicro GPU servers. It's a GPU compute cluster that utilizes the latest NVIDIA HDX H100 GPUs to deliver incomparable performance. And when you hear NVIDIA's CEO, Jensen Huang, talk about the AI token factory, this is it. This is what it looks like. This is a purpose-built machine that is going to take civilization into the future. The design features 32 GPUs per rack. That's in four servers at Applied Digital's configuration. It's currently running two superclusters in two groups of 32 racks for each supercluster. In other words, there are 256 NVIDIA GPUs here, and online and operational, with another 128 NVIDIA GPUs planned. And look at the elegance of each one of these supermicro systems. This implementation of NVIDIA's HGX is purpose-built for AI and high-performance computing. Each of the four supermicrosystems per rack has eight Hopper SXMs on a fully connected NVLink mesh on the baseboard shown here. And each GPU has a dedicated NVIDIA ConnectX networking card to connect to the HGX GPU fabric. The MCIO connectors that you see here provide direct CPU PCIe connections. So you've got two high performance Xeons in each one of these chassis. The processing capability ties the NVIDIA GPU baseboard, you know, the NVLink connections and the ConnectX networking and the local storage and all of that to the rest of the GPU fabric at maximum speed. But that's not all you have to worry about with a solution like this. It really starts with the data center and the physical infrastructure. This is brand new construction designed for state-of-the-art deployments like this. But I want you to notice, there is no raised floor here. It's just concrete. It's relatively traditional construction. And this is just one section of this massive data center building, but it has enough capacity for at least three of these state-of-the-art deployments. We've already got three megawatts online for these two superclusters and the storage subsystem, and this area is already set up to support another two megawatts. Power and cooling were a big part of the design considerations here and is one of the first places to start. The design is dual power rails. Each rack is 45 kilowatts after all, and the work really begins in setting up the power system. So we've got our power distribution systems overhead and your Simplex PowerStar heaters. These stand in for our supercluster. This produces the load. You can see this is critically important, not just for the data center, but also the utility company that supplies the electricity. The data center has to be sure that everything is cabled properly and that everything can handle the load properly. And that load is appropriately balanced across the inputs that the data center is using. You can see that the data center has multiple power rails fed by multiple transformers from the utility company, different power phases. And you can see the distribution channels above. These breakouts provide dual connections from each rail and each rack is connected to two or more rails for redundancy. Safe because all of the things that turn this on are in this box. Danger, Will Robinson, I'm safe, but there's nothing crazy going on here right now. But what you see here generates one megawatt of load for this particular front to back aisle. So there's two racks like will be on either side of what will become the hot aisle here. And this is a full megawatt. On the other side, another megawatt. And this is what would energize them and turn everything on. And then they start producing a ton of heat. These simulate the electrical usage. This is just the same electrical load, but it's only producing heat as opposed to heat and useful calculation. But this lets the data center and the utility provider be confident that, hey, yeah, we brought another two megawatts online and nothing untoward is going to happen to the rest of the data center. This is a critical, necessary step that happens even before the first rack shows up in the facility. 
I'm standing in the hot aisle. All the hot air is going to come in here. The racks are going to be distributed here and the hot air is going to exhaust out the top. Just this, the same way that we have with our other super pods. It's a lot of careful planning and consideration that goes into every deployment. And there has to be when you're spending this many millions of dollars. The next most important aspect of our setup is networking. The network fabric feeding all these HGX H100 systems is also from NVIDIA. 400 and 800 gigabit NVIDIA ConnectX networking cards create a fully connected mesh. That ensures every NVIDIA GPU has reliable low latency access to every other GPU in the cluster. On top of that, ConnectX is used for the storage network and even the customer facing network. The management network is the simplest and probably the most recognizable. It's typically a one gigabit network that's isolated from the other networks and used for monitoring and remote control of all of the servers by the provider data center. It's usually isolated from everything else. It connects the switches and other monitoring infrastructure that are in the super cluster. Even the power strips are connected to this network so you can monitor power usage at an individual plug. That's typically the orange wiring you see at the setup here. And the management network is also typically the only network that's implemented with traditional copper ethernet. Everything else tends to be that insanely high speed NVIDIA ConnectX network fabric, 400 gigabit, 800 gigabit and beyond. The main switch is the NV switch GPU fabric, which is a major innovation from NVIDIA that enables both scale up and scale out. If you take a look at our rack layout here, you can see the network fabric switch at the start of each aisle of racks. Each rack has four GPU servers in it, and each of those servers in each of the eight racks has eight network interfaces. That's eight dedicated NVIDIA ConnectX cards running at 400 gigabit, one for each NVIDIA GPU in every system. You can see that here when we look at the back of the rack. All eight of those turquoise cables, that's part of our GPU fabric. It's 3.2 terabits per node. The storage network may be shared, but typically the storage network may be implemented via an additional four or 800 gigabit dual port adapter. And everything here has redundant optical adapters and redundant power supplies, so that if an optic or a power supply goes bad, you wouldn't really know right away because everything will just keep operating normally. The network cards themselves inside each GPU node are a copper interface to the bus and the system and its high speed, but there are copper to optical adapters that can switch at 400 gigabit and typically in our setup or 800 gigabit farther upstream. That's what these optical adapters are into the turquoise cables. All the turquoise cables, those are all optical cables. So those fiber optic networks are running on the turquoise cables pretty much everywhere you see them at this facility. Notice also the number of fiber optic connections coming out of the top of each rack too. That helps provide the fully connected mesh to groups of servers in the other aisles. The wiring here comes out of the top of the racks and goes directly into the overhead wiring trays. This is a literal information superhighway that connects to the other nodes in the supercluster. Remember that even with all of this, we've still only got 256 GPUs in just what you see here. And there's 2,048 GPUs in our two superclusters. My name is Rich Ickey. I am a senior HPC engineer. It's my job to make sure all the cables work. They all go in the right place. We have power and cooling. That's what I do. When I first hired on, the architect had planned things out with two, two cages separated by about 50 meters, which meant the equipment was about 75 meters apart. That was going to cost us about $1.5 million in extra cabling and optics. So when I first started, we, we moved our core racks to the side of a cage to get everything within 50 meters because if you go from 50 meters to 51 meters, you go from MPO cables to single channel cables and the price doubles roughly. And it's 1,024 cables between each pod. So that pod had 3,096 cables, fiber optic cables and optics, just to intercommunicate between the pods. So $1.5 million roughly was saved. And finally, the purple wiring that you see here, that's the external network. That's typically used by the client or customer to load jobs, collect process data, and actually use the systems. We'll talk about the software side of that and what that looks like in just a bit. Well, okay, that's uh, the GPU fabric, but what about the storage? How does storage work? Here's our storage pod. This platform is over three petabytes of extremely low latency flash memory. Every GPU node in the cluster also has a lot of local storage, but feeding data to a cluster this powerful demands the highest performance storage network. Every storage node interface in this fabric 
is at 800 gigabit and the storage pool runs the Weka data platform. This is one of the highest performance data fabrics available today and they tell me everything is end-to-end -end RDMA. It's not just about high throughput. This architecture affords the lowest possible latency and information storage retrieval. Whatever the cluster demands to not only keep all those GPUs fed but to also capture the work product from the job and prepare it for retrieval. That's what this storage fabric architecture is all about. But to see all this come together, we need to look at this from the software side of things. What does it look like on the network? As these are all flash, this is dual 400 gig connections from each node. So this is quite the storage fabric. And of course the Weka platform to uh, make that go fast. This is what a graph looks like from the network utilization standpoint, 12 terabits per second. This is an inferencing a training run, I guess, that is going on right now, and 12 terabits of switching capacity, you really do use it when you're running that kind of a workload. It's slowed down a little bit in the last few hours, but over the last two days, you can see that every time it hits a checkpoint, that uh, things wait a second for the checkpoint to go on, and then the job resumes. And uh, 12 terabits, you know, just casually, it's fine. Peaking toward 20 terabit uh, on the InfiniBand network for training and every, you can sort of see the, the log here, 419. We really peaked here, 17.5 terabits, just under. That is a serious amount of network connectivity in this supercluster. From 12 to 20 terabits, that means overall our job was being loaded to the GPU servers at nearly two terabytes per second. That's fast. You might be wondering, well, okay, what's the control and orchestration method here? So ironically, one of the things we do is we use Proxmox, Kubernetes, Slurm. Um, we use the tools that fit the needs for the customer. Proxmox? Yeah, Proxmox. Proxmox helps manage a cluster of this scale, no problem, by hosting all of the VMs and containers necessary to wrangle all of the hardware. And Proxmox is not running on our GPU nodes, it's really just playing an orchestration role here. Um, right now, Proxmox is our go-to for virtualization. Um, we have a little cloud put together for that. We use it mainly for things like authentication, monitoring tools, um, DNS, yeah. So this is a map of the network logically. We're gonna take a look at it physically, but this is the logical layout and every single black line here is a fiber optic cable. And that is what is out on the floor. I spy the two U Weka nodes, there's a lot of them, and there's a lot of fiber optic connectivity. And we can see that in the racks. We can see that in the, in the hot end of the racks. The combination of open source software and software like Weka plus NVIDIA's software really comes together to build a truly serviceable software platform for building whatever you want. But the hardware serviceability is also key here. Our network map and monitoring software is logged into each and every thing on our ethernet fabric. Everything that I've shown, got a bad power supply, we'll see it in red. Bad optic, we'll see that too in the monitoring dashboard. So I'm gonna play the role of chaos monkey now that this is operational. I've unplugged this, and so there's an alert that's gonna appear on somebody's dashboard, a blinking red LED, and somebody's gonna have to walk down the hallway and investigate the blinking red LED. It's pretty awesome, really, that uh, somebody gets an alert and, uh, oh, Oh, hello, how's it going? Yeah, well, I mean, we're just doing a test for the video, you know. I... There we go. Yeah. All righty, thank you. Everything here is about serviceability. You might not realize, but Supermicro ships these racks fully pre-configured and ready for cabling. Power, networking, and servers are already pre-installed in the rack. When the rack arrives on site, we're ready for just plug it in and connect the network connections. To be sure, the networking isn't trivial, but doing it this way dramatically shortens the turn-up time for a cluster like this. And when there are issues, the monitoring software and the hardware features make the serviceability second to none. It is easy for technicians to pull a chassis and swap CPU components, GPU components, networking components, all the complicated stuff, as well as the easy stuff like swapping a power supply or a bad optic module. So what's some of the, the jobs that are actually running on this cluster? Well, when I was peeking behind the curtain here, one of the jobs running was a diabetes research application. They're doing protein folding and biological research into type one diabetes. And so my job here is to architect, design, assist in the building, and uh, then maintaining the InfiniBand fabrics, um, which is ironic because a lot of these tools are being used for medical advancements. And as a type one diabetic, maybe I'll help out fixing myself. 
And there we go, we're online. Uh, the utility company felt that. Gene Poddenberry is responding. <laughs> Takes a village, right? A little more than a village, it's a global operation. So there you have it. That's what a modern data center looks like. I hope this was interesting and uh, engage below, comment, like, subscribe, whatever. I don't know, however all that stuff works. And big thanks to Applied Digital and Super Micro for making this happen because you don't often get to peek behind the curtain like this. Hit me up in the forum if I missed anything or you want to see any other detail because we shot a lot of footage. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums.